Caddis Maximus here. This time I'm doing just a quick review of the GM Power Torque uh, GM6125. This is a swivel, or in ratchet terms, this would be a roto head palm ratchet. It's a neat little item, although it's a little pricey, like right about 10 bucks. This one is in 3H drive. And uh, indeed, it seems like it's pretty decent quality, although the ratchet mechanism here uh, is a little bit coarse. Now, it's starting to clean up after I fiddle with it, but initially, it was pretty coarse. But it actually, it's come together quite nicely. It has a very strong ball detent. Uh, to retain the socket so the sockets aren't going to pull, pull off or fall off you know accidentally or unintentionally however it's a little bit difficult sometimes if you have a specially tight fitting socket i could see you know until the anvil starts to wear in that you may even have to use a slot head screwdriver to pop it off it's not as strong as what snap snap on uh detents are but it's definitely a pretty stout detent and we can see that it's the stamping is pretty well centered so that's not too bad they use Torx, fast, or Torx fasteners or star drive, uh, T20 on each side and T15 for the ratchet wheel to rebuild the ratchet. It is indeed rebuildable. Uh, the one thing that is plastic on it is the reversing lever and I didn't appreciate that too much. And let me correct myself again, that actually appears to be cast zinc. Let me take it apart and we'll see if it's a magnetic, but I, that mottled surface doesn't really, it, it could be molded plastic, but it, it up close to the eye it does seem like that reversing lever is indeed metal so that anyway the idea with this we'll take a look at it inside in just a second here is that you would have the socket and you would be able to use it as a normal thumb ratchet you have kind of an easier grip area there you have this ring that goes around and just like a roto head this ring can flip and so the idea is you can kind of grab it and use it as a, uh, an odd angle and it doesn't work so well that way to tell you the truth uh, it's not any more easier to use this thing when the ring is at that angle than a normal thumb drive or thumb ratchet. Let me go grab one here. Here we have a normal thumb ratchet and when you're at an off angle your hand is already at the same angle that you'd use the ring at so the ring kind of makes it a little bit odd. What I did like about it is that you can flip the ring up vertically. That makes a big difference. Uh, one thing I like thumb ratchets for is to quickly run fasters in and out that may be a little bit rusty or have a couple nicks in the threads but you don't want to run a ratchet and they're still get caught up and they're too tight just to run the sock the fastener in by hand just by grabbing the socket so that's what I use some ratchets for and so I thought this was handy because you could flip the ring up and then you actually get quite a bit of purchase just a real nice grip to uh, get it so you can apply a lot of torque and actually get it to thread in the way the ring wraps around so far though when you flip it up first thing it restricts the size this is a 14 millimeter socket it only accepts up to about 17 maybe a thin wall 19 millimeter socket and some i have larger sockets than that in 3 8 and so that was one annoying thing is that this gap is a bit small concerning you may use it with a larger socket just to move to quickly run in a fastener where you only have space to really use a thumb ratchet or and then a regular ratchet or box wrench and secondly the way these wings come down I could easily see where you're in many situations where they would just end up uh, causing interference and knocking in the stuff. But I still like this upper ring. So what I'm going to do is at the end of the video, I'm actually going to cut off these two legs here and then round it out. So it just has the top ring. And that's really how I would like this and how to use it. But for right now, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, take a quick look inside at the ratchet mechanism. We'll use the T15. We'll go and reverse the lever so we can unscrew it. Hopefully it, everything doesn't fall apart on me. I do like systems like this that are easier to disassemble and reassemble even though you have to make sure the screw is tight versus ones like this which use snap rings that you kinda the spiral snap rings where you kinda have to battle with it a little bit. And there's our little screw. We can see that it has a shelf on it so you can torque it down tight but it won't lock up the reverse lever. Here is our reverse lever. I believe this thing is metal. It's kind of hard to... S no, it's not. It's plastic. It's too lightweight to be any form of metal. So uh, it's just probably cast nylon, but there is a little uh, steel peg in there. 
and we can see there's our ratchet paw. It actually uses one large ratchet paw. One thing to note that it is bone dry inside, so they did not lubricate these from the factory at all. It has an interesting heart-shaped spring, and how that works is the rat, when you rotate that head around, it's either pulling the heart-shaped spring over to this side, or it's pulling it over to this side to give you forward and reverse. And we can just lift this out, and there's our little mechanism. There's our little heart spring, and it just pulls right out of the mechanism. So that's this is actually really easy to rebuild. There's our anvil, uh, you know, nicely put together piece. And then there is our actual ratchet paw. And I do like that. It's obviously a very large, it's fine tooth, so this would be a 72 tooth unit. Uh, this paw is put together, you know, it seems to be, it's a centered piece of metal. So it's powdered metal that's baked. Um, which is technically not as strong as forged, but it can be made out of the same materials and be extremely hard And so I'm sure this is just fine. And it's actually surprising to see such a large ratchet paw But they probably use this mechanism and all their round head uh, Standard handle ratchets, so they just go ahead and use that in uh, this unit as well But that is nice to see that they just use one large paw And then we have of course the teeth that are cut on the inside there and they're not too bad it is surprising how dry it is in there, so that would explain its rough feel. So I'll go ahead and get a little bit of lubrication inside it. We'll leave it apart so I don't get particles uh, inside it while I go ahead and modify it. What I'm going to do is, uh, actually I'm modifying the blue ring so I can reassemble it. But I'm going to cut the two legs off of this blue ring so and then file it kind of around and we'll see how that comes out. Rather than showing the whole process, what I'll do is I'll cut these off, show how I cut them off, and then I'll file one of them file them down and uh, come back to the video at that point. Okay, we'll see you in just a minute here. Oops, I forgot to mention that uh, there is, it is pretty stiff. There is stiff springs that hold this blue ring in place so it doesn't feel like it's going to accident or it's going to get too loose, but I do want to try to knock this apart and it's actually surprisingly, those screws are in there real tight. I'm gonna actually have to get something inside here so I can get just a little bit more leverage. There's definitely some Loctite on those. Oh, and I see what they've done here. So now we know how it's held together. Oh yeah, they used, uh, they didn't use Loctite, they used uh, a form of glue, and it's a real special screw. You see it has uh, just a quarter inch of thread and then a smooth shoulder. And then what they're using to provide tension, oh, that spring is kind of stuck in there. Let's see if we can't get the other side apart here. And Okay, that one was not quite as tight as that first one. That first one was not coming loose for anybody. There we go. So the spring's just caught in this other side here for some reason. We'll dig that out in a second. But there's a little spring, and actually that's a nice touch. Sometimes they use little washers in between the face of, you know, like on a roto head ratchet, they'll use a washer there that provides the tension. Sometimes those will flatten out and get, and get loose. But having two real strong springs in there... Uh, that's a real good idea. I really do uh, appreciate that design. And this is, of course, an uh, aluminum handle. Okay, we'll see you in a second after I uh, start modifying this. Okay, I'm back here. So what I did is I cut off those two little legs. I just hacksawed them off. You know, there's nothing like buying a new tool and then brutalizing it with a hacksaw and file. But uh, I had an idea, and this is kind of what I did. I didn't get those perfectly rounded. Uh, it's a good quality aluminum, it's surprisingly enough, but this is, you know, good enough for what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this and then show how it looks. Alrighty, we got it all back together. Let me get a socket on there. I'll tell you what. Uh, one of the sprays that I use right here is this uh, Slick 51 Lube. Uh, I've almost used this in tire can on the last drop. I will appreciate that they made the straw go to the very bottom of the can. Uh, but that stuff really particularly on chains people there's fluids that are advertised as being chain and cable lube this stuff i've used on people's electric scooters those chinese ones that will go like 30 miles an hour chain drive and it's amazing a chain whipping around fast enough to make an 11 inch wheel take you 30 miles an hour 
and this stuff actually stays on the chain. Anyway, so after lubing this thing, totally different. Very low backswing torque, very low. So this is the optimal for a uh, thumb ratchet. This is really nice now that it's lubricated. And then you can see what I've done here. So now I don't have those wings that are just, I thought were just tremendously annoying. Obviously I didn't do the greatest job filing. I just kind of rounded out the corners. I wanted to make sure I left uh, a thick enough lug on each side here and then match the angles. I did okay. You know, this was just a, a file and a hacksaw. But uh, this is really the idea that I had for this because that way I have something where I have just a real good purchase here. So when I'm thumb ratcheting it, I can actually get, you know, a good amount of torque and run a, a faster and real nice and fast. And it still gives you the, a nice external grip. And what's kind of nice about these new edges is they're easier to use. So even in the flat portion, when you're ratcheting, you can grab that edge with your finger and really get a, once again, a nice purchase. Or if you go in the reverse direction, you can do the same thing. So to tell you the truth, this is the ring handle I think this swivel head palm ratchet should have came with. And I really like this tool now. As ugly as it looks and what I did to it, it's much better now. And I don't have those little wings interfering. And it's just a lot easier to use in a variety of situations. Uh, and I really like being able to flip that handle up and use it like that. So anyway, that's the end of a review of the GM Power Torque. What is it? The GM 6125 Roto Head Thumb Ratchet and the modifications that I made to it. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.